Hello guys, my name is Julia and I'm a freelance photographer based in Tokyo, Japan and this is my very first YouTube tutorial about skin retouching technique that I use which is a dodge and burn. So let's start. The first thing that I want to mention here is that I'm using a graphic tablet to retouch and this is a very important. If you haven't ever tried to use it yet, you have to start because without a graphic tablet there is no such thing as a high quality skin retouching possible you don't have to buy a fancy one expensive one you can just purchase the cheapest one and believe me it will do its job the one that I use is a Wacom tablet like the most cheap like the cheapest one that is in the market and I'm pretty happy with it and I don't think that I'm gonna change it like it's not the same thing as changing your camera or lenses that you need to keep it upgraded so with a graphic tablet you, you can just purchase the cheapest one and use it and be happy so the next thing that I want to say about this this technique is that it takes a while to learn it I mean if if it won't work from the first time you don't you just have to practice it just don't give up I spent hours, hours, hours practicing until I was happy with the results. The other thing that I would suggest, if you're not that advanced in um, female makeup, you would be very helpful if you will watch a few YouTube tutorials about makeup, about contouring, highlighting, so that you will understand more the shape of the face, where it's should be highlighted where it's supposed to be more shadows on the face it's really really helpful believe me even if there was there are guys watching me guys i know it sounds weird but believe me it will help because even if you had bad light conditions during your photo shoot with dodge and burn you can fix anything so let's get started few words about this particular photo it's a recent one that I took during the golden hour and it's a backlit portrait of the beautiful Beatrice I will link her Instagram down below and I think this photo will be really good example in terms of skin retouching because we still have a lot of texture preserved here and as you can see I've already applied um, color correction that I did in camera raw I'm not gonna show you how I did that in this tutorial we will I will film maybe next one about it so this one will be only about the skin retouching but I can show you before and after this is a before and this is after and if you will see the straight out of camera file has no grain in it yes this is what i did in camera raw i added some grain and i do this all the time because it gives this nice texture to the skin as you can see i don't know but i really like to do this this is a trick that i do all the time so let's start First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new adjustment layer, curves adjustment layer, and I will drag the central point higher in the highlights like that. And then I'm going to delete the layer mask and group from layers. I will call it touch and add layer mask, invert it in black and do the same for burn curves into blacks delete the layer mask group from layers and we will call it burn add mask invert and we can, can group them and name dodge and burn I will actually create an action for this so you won't have to do this every time and I will put the link to download the action somewhere in the description box. So after we created those two uh, groups, we can start painting out. This is the most interesting thing. Um, so I'm using the white brush with 10% hardness which is like soft brush basically with opacity 100% and a flow 1% this is really important because if you will put 
higher amount in a flow, then you won't be able to control what you do. I prefer to paint over the same place a few times other than go back every time because it's easy to overdo stuff. So keep it in 1%. And we just start to painting in the places where we feel like it should be just a slightly bit lighter. As you can see, I'm not zoomed in that much because I feel like when you zoom in, it's easy to overdo stuff. You will unintentionally get rid of the texture that we need to preserve. Generally, almost everything that I do here, I will do in dodge layer because, I don't know, I don't have to use burn that much. Sometimes I use it to add some contouring, shadow, I don't know, but not that much really. Also, I can use dodge to highlight some parts of the face that should be more highlighted. This is where a makeup artist put highlight. Don't be stuck in one place, just jump around the different areas and this is what will help you not to overdo it. As you can see, I constantly change the size of a brush. This is because I have a shortcut and I just need to press two buttons on my keyboard and this is pretty fast to do that. Let's see some before and after. Looks nice. The other thing that happens when you use dodge and burn is these areas where you use dodge, they will look just a slightly bit oversaturated in a way. To fix that, we need to select the curves and then go to adjustment layers and select hue saturation. And with the saturation slider, we need to lower this saturation a bit. You see it changes? So we need to find a number that will fit us. I would say something like minus 12 works perfectly. You see that? Perfect.
So I'm pretty much happy with the result at that point. I will usually zoom out dramatically to see how it looks from afar. This is where you start to see all the flaws that you probably missed during the retouching. And this is how most of the people will see your photo when you upload it on Instagram or you send it to someone because they will look at it on their smartphone display. And rarely somebody will zoom in to see all the flaws. Like nobody will do that. So we just need to make sure that when it's zoomed out, it looks good. Let's see one more before and after. Looks good to me and let's see dramatic before and after. This is the result that we got. I'm pretty happy with that. So the next step that I would do, we basically finished with dodge and burn. So now I'm going to just play around with a selective color and I will increase the vibrance a bit using it and I will Turn it just a bit warmer for my taste, like that. Let's see. We can even decrease the opacity if it's too much. Kind of like that. Yeah, so this is our before and after. So this is a basic of tutorial. Of course it looks pretty easy, but guys, I did it a thousand times and I know for sure what I'm doing. But to come to this, I spent hours practicing and figuring out where to put light and where to put shadow. And this is what you have to do. Don't give up. If it doesn't work from the first time and from the second, and believe me, it won't work, you have to spend more time practicing. And this is a key to achieve the good results that you will be happy about. So that is it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.